One of the reasons I got into nutrition in my teens was that I did a lot of endurance exercise. Long distance cross country walking, backpacking and cycle touring. I didn't go vegan as such, I just realised that eating cheaply, having lightweight food for travel and packing a whole lot of nutrition in a small space made vegan whole foods far preferable to the canned or dried rubbish generally on offer to campers in the 1980s. Back then I unwittingly involved a simple snack that packed a balance of proteins, fats and carbohydrates that kept me going. Lembus scones. The concoction is basically what it says. Lembus, a label taken from Tolkien's great tome to describe a snack curated for wayfaring, and scone, a traditional recipe for a leaven cake which I used to create it. These days I regularly make Lembus scones to take day walking or to keep me going on my travels around Britain or working at festivals. Like the whey bread described in Tolkien's books, they're a lightweight, nutrient-rich snack that keeps you many days without spoiling and keeps you feeling well fed when travelling under your own power. In part one I used a pestle and mortar to create a coarse nut meal bound together by mushy chickpeas to make a nut burger. The approach here is more intense. Bash the nuts, seeds and whatever else you use into a fine meal. That makes a better quality scone, but also aids the faster digestion of the ingredients to keep your muscles fed. As stated previously, I do not measure, and so the measurements here have been taken for the amounts I would approximately throw into the mix. Likewise, the ingredients are what I had to hand, and both the types of flour used, the nuts or seeds used as the filler, the amount of sugar, or the flavouring used can be varied to suit your taste. The method is the same irrespective of the ingredients used. Put the mixed fruits and oats into a bowl to soak in some hot but not boiling water. Unlike the ever more oily ingredients, oats and mixed fruit will rob moisture from the mix as it cooks. Pre-soaking makes them far more lush and tasty. Today I'm using hazelnuts. You can use them raw, but hazelnuts are one of those nuts that improve when roasted. I put them on a tray in the oven, preheat the gas mark for 176 Celsius, 350 Fahrenheit, for 5 to 10 minutes, until they start smelling like lovely baked bread. Next, get some exercise with a pestle and mortar. The nuts and seeds need to be pounded down to a fine meal, so that nothing is bigger than a mustard seed or a grain of rice. That makes the scone more uniform in texture and aids leavening. Now mix the wheat flour, the raising agents, the best in flour and the sugar in a large bowl. Take the time to sift both the raisin agents and the best in flour through your fingers as they often contain lumps and crush any lumps you find. Or use a coarse sieve if you want to add to the washing up. I grate some nutmeg into the flour to add flavour. You might want to omit this or add more sugar or dissolve a little treacle or molasses in warm water and use that to mix the dough or omit the mixed fruit though I use it because it's a good source of unrefined sugars and minerals. How you flavour the scones, or not, is up to you. Next, add the oil and mix. First, roughly mix with the fingers until the oil has disappeared. Then thoroughly blend the flour and oil between your palms to create a very fine, crumb-like mass. You could use solid fat, or butter, as in a traditional recipe, but I find oil so much easier to the traditional use of harder fats. It's important to get through this stage really quickly. That's because the moment you add water, the raisin agents start to work. And there's no point in using them if kneading and rolling just batters the gas bubbles out of the dough by taking too long. Begin by putting the oven on gas mark 5, 190 Celsius, 375 Fahrenheit. Next, grease a baking tray. Put a little flour on top and shake it to make it stick all over the surface, which helps to create a non-stick coating without using toxic chemicals. Greasing and flouring the oven tray first and putting the on to preheat means time isn't wasted later when the raisin agents have started to do their work. Now mix the pestle and moistened nuts into the bowl. Drain any excess water from the oats and mixed fruit and add that too. Then mix everything together. What happens when you roughly mix is the flour is taking moisture from the oats and mixed fruit rather than the other way around if they had not been soaked. When the mix starts to cake into lump, add more water a little at a time. Carry on until you have a sticky but not wet dough. If you put too much water in, add just a little more flour to soak it up, which is what I deliberately do in the video to show how to do this. 
put the dough on a floured surface and give a little knead to get a more uniform ball. Now you can roll it flat, not less than 12 to 15 millimetres or half an inch thick. Then cut circles or other shapes and place them on the tray. As soon as the tray is full, put it in the oven, near the top, for around 20 to 25 minutes. Turning the tray around after 10 or 15 minutes to make sure they're evenly baked. When baked to a light brown colour, place the scones on wire trays until they have completely cooled. Then store in an airtight container to keep them fresh or put in the freezer. I make big batches of scones and put them in the freezer, taking them out a small container full at a time to use as and when needed. It means I have fresh scones whenever I want them and saves time and cost. The recipe shown here makes about 2 kilos of dough. For smaller batches just divide those figures to get the amount you require. The scones cost 8 pence to 12 pence each, although the cost will vary depending on what ingredients are used and how they are sourced. The nutritional content of the scones can be calculated for each ingredient by dividing the weight in grams used by 100 and multiplying by the stated value on the supplier's analysis, then add everything together to get the total. The table here lists a few other similar snacks chosen at random. Lemba scones have a good protein content, but what is significant is the ratio of carbohydrates to sugars, which means the scones provide more slow burn nutrition compared to the other more sugary shop bought options. Lemba scones are a cheap and nutritious snack that compare well to shop bought food. They're an example of how do it yourself is a real, practical alternative to the products society encourages consumers to buy to help people take exercise.